morning. Today we are starting chapter 8 and we're going to start discussing different types of loans that you can take. Today specifically we're going to talk about single payment loans. So a single payment loan is simply if you're going to borrow money and make it and pay it back in just one single payment versus making monthly payments or bi-monthly payments. So these are our vocabulary words. If you need to pause the video to write those down, you may do so now. So again, a single payment loan is a loan payment you pay, repay with one payment after a specified period of time. So you'll decide that with the lender, what your time period is going to be in paying back that loan. When you make that decision, you'll you'll both sign what's called a promissory note. That promissory note is a written promise to pay a certain sum of money on a specific date in the future. You'll also discuss before you sign that note what your percentage rate will be and how you're going to pay that back. The maturity value of your loan is the total amount you must repay for the loan. So that your maturity value is not only going to be what you borrowed, but it's also going to be that interest included. That's what we're going to calculate today. A few more words we're going to talk about. So we're going to use two different methods today of calculating that single payment loan. We're going to use the exact interest method and the ordinary interest method. Now the only thing that's different about those is the time period. An exact interest will use a calendar year. It'll be based off of 365 days, where ordinary interest is loan based off of a 360-day year. So that's the only thing that's different. Exact interest will be based off of 365 days, and ordinary will be based off of 360. The calculations from there will be exactly the same. We're also going to talk about the term, and the term is the amount of time for which the loan is granted. So you decide when that payback will be, and you'll calculate the amount of the interest you will owe during that time frame. All right, so let's look at our formulas for today. So you'll recall in previous lessons that we calculated simple interest by finding the principal multiplying it by the rate, and multiplying it by the time. We're going to utilize that formula, but it depends on what type of interest we will be looking for today. If it's an ordinary interest, we're going to take our time. Now, make sure that time is in days, and we're going to divide those days by 360 if it's ordinary. If it's exact, we're going to take that time and divide it by 365. So you can see that we're just simply utilizing that same simple interest formula repeatedly. Then from there, we'll calculate the mature value. So this is what you're going to actually pay back. You're going to pay back the principal, the amount that you borrowed, in addition to that, the interest that has accrued over that time period in which you borrowed that money. Okay, so let's look at Mary. Mary's bank gave her a single payment loan of $12,500 for 90 days. Determine the maturity value of the loan if the rate is 6% and she's calculating it using the ordinary interest method. So if we're gonna do the ordinary interest method, we're gonna start with her principal, which is 12,500. We're going to multiply the rate. Now, since it's, the rate is 6%, we're going to take 6% divided by 100, or make that 0 0.06, times she's going to have it in there or borrow it for 90 days, and the ordinary interest will be divided by 360. So the ordinary interest that she's going to have to pay back will be $187.50. Now the maturity value of her loan, now this is what she has to pay total back. She has to pay what she borrowed, the $12,500. In addition to that, she has to pay $187.50. So she'll owe total $12,687.50. All right, now if we use that same information, but 
use the exact interest method. We're still looking at 6%. So we're going to calculate that exact interest again, except we'll change one number slightly. We're going to take that 360 and make it a 365. Now you'll see that it's not extremely different, but it does save a few dollars to go the exact interest rate. So that'll give us $184.93 that we owe back or Mary owes back in interest. And the maturity value of her loan will be $12,000. $84.93. So she has a few dollars left using the exact interest, and that's because we're dividing by a higher number. All right, so in your textbooks, you can find concept check on page 306. And if you want to pause the video and try this one and then come back to see how you did. So Parker's purchasing a surfboard costing $600 and financing it at 9% for 90 days. So we'll find the ordinary interest first. So we'll start with his principal. We're going to take his rate of 9% and he's also using 90 days. So quick calculation, his interest would be $13.50, making his mature value $600. $13.50. If they utilize the exact interest method, we'll take those same numbers again and do a quick calculation divided by 365, and that makes his interest be $13.32. So the mature value would then be $613.32. All right, if you'll jump down to concept check number three, this one's going to have that algebra component to it. It says, how long will it take a construction loan for $548,048 to earn interest of $50,000 at 9% exact interest? All right, so this time we know what the interest is. We know the rate and we know the principal, what we're missing is the time. How long will it be in that loan? All right, so we know that we wanna earn $50,000 in interest. The construction loan originated for $548,048. The interest rate is 9%. We're looking for that time component and we're gonna divide by 365 because this is exact interest. Now, if I'm solving for time, what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna multiply both sides of this equation by 365. And that's gonna get rid of that fraction for me. So 365 times 50,000, that's a big number, gives us 18,200 I'm sorry, $18,250,000 is equal to, now I'm going to go ahead and multiply these two numbers together to make this a little bit easier. And that calculation will give me $49,324.32. And then all I'll be left with on the right hand side is times T. So from there, I'm going to go ahead and divide out that $49,324.32 to both sides. And when I do so, the time needs to be 370 days. Okay. Look for your assignment on Google Classroom, and if you have any questions, let me know.